them. Not always predict exactly what they're going for. So far, very standard banning. Rumble, I think, is good. Rumble has been one of the most popular picks on red side in the first rotation. Like, you give away a Syndra, or you give away one of the top tier junglers, and then you take a Rumble. I may therefore ban it away. So again, they can go for one of these standard first picks. And the reason I love Rumble right now is not only is he a great team fighter, but since we made the change, he has the shove in a lot of the top lanes. And that is hard to deal with, especially if you know there is an invading jungle like a Nidalee or an Elise on the other team that we are seeing spring up much more often. So I think that Rumble is a very safe ban here for Ime. As we said, Amazing J doesn't play it really, and they just want to get rid of one of Juke's best. Yeah, second game in a row against Ime where Road is not allowed to play Bard. It is definitely his best champion, he's a massive playmaker on it, and in these best of ones, you don't want to risk facing a bot who's playing on form. Absolutely agree. It's also the second time in a row now, Ime has banned Rumble themselves, once on Red now, once on Blue. <laughs> we talk about champion pools available, and maybe Rumble's not one for them. We are seeing, though, avoid this as Zac is gone. SKT don't want to deal with it. Yeah, and that's the second time SKT has banned Zac against a Zac player. Obviously, against C9, they banned it against Meteos, and now banning it against Avoidless. Yeah, and I actually like these bans from Ime because the LCK teams have shown they really like Rumble Ezreal as, as a rotation. The Korean AD carries are fantastic on Ezreal in the late game. So by banning away these picks here, again, you set up that first pick for Aimei, where you don't have to worry about first picking Ezreal or Rumble, and you don't have to deal with that first rotation from SKT. But first rotation, Nidalee is available here. 100% pick fan champion at World so far. The only champ to be this. We saw it played earlier today, and it was actually the win for Albus Knox over Counter Logic Gaming, and yet here we see that IMA doesn't seem to care. Yeah, and if this is locked in, that is a huge gauntlet thrown at Blank, because right now, Blank had a shaky MSI on the Nidalee, then didn't go back to Korea and perform particularly well on the champion either. Uh, I would not be surprised if a team, you know, does throw this challenge early at SKT and see if their young jungler can step up. Blank obviously can go for the Rek'Sai if he wants to. But as you said, you know, 50% win rate only this year for Blank on, on the Italy. Definitely not been one of his greatest picks if you look at his individual performance. But it is a pick that is so often banned, and it's crazy. We have the top three junglers open, and then all of Zac banned. But this is a good read here by Aime. You look at SKT's stats throughout the summer, in three quarters of their games, they banned Nidalee. Never received the Nidalee ban. They weren't the ones really playing it here, reading that even though Nidalee's believed to be the best champion, it's not one that's going to get picked up, and instead we can now get the insta-lock rise here on the blue side. And this is what we said. Baimi has played, I think, 17 victories on Rise right now. He's played 21 games total, I believe, in solo queue. 19 games. 19, okay. Lost two only on the Rise. But in saying that, Deficio and I found this information in about two minutes, so SKT must know this is coming. Yeah, and they clearly are not afraid of the Rise. I mean, it's the first time we see this Rise here at the World Championships, and it is a super risky pick. It's a fantastic split push, a great 1v1, but once you get into big team fights, it is very hard to execute this rise, but this is why I may swap in Baimi to play this. As you said before, Spawn, he played it 19 times here in the North American solo queue. The next most played champion for him was Ezreal with four games only, so he's been <laughs> spamming that rise. Interesting, another four-letter champion coming in for the lineup as Jinx is the hover and will be locked in, so some more sort of more unique champions coming in here that Jinx threw for Jin Jiao. Yeah, I may pick and ban face. It's always interesting. Insta-locking Rise after banning Syndra, they wanted Faker to pick this Cassiopeia and then try and play the matchup. But it's such a risky one. If you get ganked once as this Rise and fall behind in this lane, there's almost nothing you can do. Late game scaling is there, however, with Rise as well as the Jinx. I mean, if Rise blows up one member and Jinx gets excited in these team fights, they will be able to run over the top. And I actually like Jinx into Cassiopeia. She's one of the few AD carries that doesn't have to really get into that danger zone that Cassiopeia throws down. Of course, with that rocket launcher being incredibly long range. So I think that as far as Jin Jiao goes, he is a hyper carry player, and this is the safest to play in this kind of team comp. Absolutely agree. He's going to be in the back line, and so far we're not seeing a lot of dive threat from SKT anyway, but they've still got a few champions to pick up here. Very, very rarely seen Nidalee from SKT, but we are seeing it picked up here now for Blank. Still 100% pick ban in the championship right now, and uh, more of a surprise pick actually for Blank coming in. Yeah, you said it earlier, Freak, how it's not been a great pick for Blank. He's only picked it once all summer split long, and he actually lost that game as well. So definitely... Uh, not a pick we see often from SKT in the summer suit, but it's a pick you will have practiced it in solo queue, practiced it in scrims a lot, 
SKT going for very, very strong lanes here who can push early on and cast you up here in the Karma Sivir to try and set up Blank to invade and find Amazing J. But now there is that kind of timer on the game because unless they go with a heavy CC top laner, there is no one to really shut down Jin Zhao's Jinx if it does get rolling, if this game gets extended to that 3-4 item slot. One of the problems with taking Nidalee in the jungle is if you don't get that incredible farm leech, she does not bring the same kind of utility into those late game team fights. Definitely not, and I may again with this Almost crazy composition where you see Rise, Jinx, Soul, they showed their hand very, very early. But they wanted to see more picks from SKT and see if they can get more counter picks. Top office is left now for Duke to get picked. We've seen Trundle into Poppy. It is a good matchup. Otherwise, you can go for range against it. Kennen can win the lane early versus Poppy, especially. Nara can win the lane early versus Poppy. Later on in the game, though, it becomes very hard then to kill this Poppy in the side lane. Well, we've seen several picks that have been good into Poppy yeah, in top. Yeah, we saw a winning Trundle and a Poppy again early today, referencing Albus Knox over CLG. We know it can be a good match. We know split pushing can be great. And SKT are one of the unique teams at Worlds where any one of their lanes can hard carry if you give them a good matchup. Yesterday it was Faker in the mid lane. Today it could easily be Duke up in top, Trundle into Poppy. We'll see if that can happen here. And the reason I love Trundle even further, not only does it win the 1v1, but when you have a look at IMA's composition, that's going to be a pure tank. Poppy diving the back line, and without that ultimate, it would be very hard to burn through and could cause Faker a little bit of difficulty as he's trying to position around this fight. So I think that even though it's a winning 1v1 matchup, it also gives that insurance late game to be able to burn through the tank. And I want to see Faker changes to cleanse in the mid lane, because one of the things you can do with Rise, level two already, you can get a two second snare if you just use your E first and then snare W right after onto Faker followed by an early gank from Elise. If Faker doesn't run cleanse, that's a very, very easy first blood. Remember, Ryze is CC, it's point on click. Yeah. You can't just juke it or anything. No, you just get snared, you get locked down by a cocoon. So I want to see if he does change, or if he just plays around and gets early vision. And Avoidless has a heavy tendency to start on camps when he's against a quicker jungler like the Nidalee. So it would not be surprising to see if he just goes, you know, straight into a red buff, into the mid lane game. See, that ends up being what happens here because early pressure could absolutely be one of the big hallmarks here of both Nidalee and Elise coming into the early match. We'll see what happens, but we are getting ready to jump into our next game, and we're on the hunt for your favorite moments and memories from Worlds 2016. Make sure you share them with us using the hashtag Worlds Big Plays. Of course, you can also vote for your teams to win here, hashtag I am win, hashtag SKT win, but either way, let us know how you've been experiencing Worlds so far. I have been loving it, absolutely. It's been wonderful casting in front of this amazing crowd, and the games have been no slouch either. So here we go go with game four of the day, rounding at the group IMA taking on SK Telecom T1. It's gonna be fun to see what Baymay can do in the mid lane on this rise. It's a pick he has practiced a lot. And as soon as they swapped them in, it was almost too obvious they would go for this mid lane champion here. No one else has picked it so far at Worlds. And they have a very similar champion pool in Athena and Baymi. And I almost thought that we had got juked and, you know, maybe they just go back to something like the Varus and play a very similar style. However, it looks like they have got a lot of cheese prepared because they're sneaking into a bottom lane brush. A little bit of poke. Eight gold for a wolf. Only knows that one was there. Road tanked it, but it's enough to say, you know what? I'm afraid. Also, it's Road's trinket. He could have clicked and figured out who placed it. Either way, they only know the support was in that brush, but it does mean they have to play this a bit differently. Yeah, very normal though to have a Braum trying to contest the bush in the bottom lane to see if he can sneak into the second one without getting poked. You want to make sure, if you're Ime, you don't do anything wrong here level one and start falling behind because you have this combination in the mid lane that can set up ganks. We talked about the cleanse before. Faker did change from Ghost to the cleanse mm -hmm. for that very specific reason. Doesn't want to die level two to Elise and Rise, just locking him down. So smart choice from him. Road still in the brush, lands the shot, but doesn't get any free gold out of that. Now Wolf actually, yeah, 11 gold, thank you very much. He's rich. Bam, all the cash earned. Damn, takes your money and hits your 80 carry as well. Yep. I do Late like dominance. the fact there that uh, SKT kept the lane level one. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see who can get the shove out, but already you can see that Faker wants to step up in that mid lane, try and challenge the rise. Yeah, so the thing about Ryze here early on is he can actually push very, very fast because it's very easy for him to get hits with his E, like just spam it away and get it onto multiple of these minions here. And then once you level up to, to level two, if you want more push again, you can just 
take your overload and you can start shoving real, real fast. No real threat of Faker dying early, so he doesn't have to go for the snare level two, and he can just start playing more aggressive. Rise is fantastic 1v1. He's going aggressive already. E and Q actually, a lot of skill shots Ooh. being landed. Good juke, Faker managed to get away from one of the skill shots here, but Bami, I do, I do think, won that trade just a little bit here. And one of the things about Bami that you do have to acknowledge is the fact that he is the roaming player. Is now Faker goes aggressive, missed the Q, and it means Faker gets a lot of shots down, lands another Q, flash, Jason, yes! That is a trade of summoner spells. Bami will survive it thanks to his profitable potion. Faker now out of mana. A really smart play by Faker here. He saw Bayme was going to just hit the minions only. He used all his spells on trying to push the wave out. That meant Faker could get a trade where there was no return from the rise. And then he knew he could go all in, just out trade Bayme very early, forcing a flash, had to use his own. A Voidless is a jungler who loves to go bottom lane early, and he's down here again. Q's gonna land onto a wolf, gets a bit of a slow, that's gonna time out now. No zap gonna land, Ooh. flash ignite, the auto was not out, that's only three hits, but it will still be a flash trade alongside wolf. Javelin thrown, they now know that Blink's down here, and all's well. Road tried to time his flash with that rocket flying in the air from Jin Zhao, just to see if he can get the auto tag off and actually stun wolf, followed up by a flash cocoon from a Voidless. Wolf was uh, quick enough though on the flash, no auto tag from Road and everyone stays alive. Yeah, actually really patient play there out of Wolf, and he doesn't even burn the exhaust, so summon a spell advantage in the end, coming out for the SKT bottom lane. And already, you know, that is a pretty big zone coming in in the mid lane. Faker had the wave frozen quite nicely, but now Blank going in for a pretty risky invade. We already talked about this CC layering. Here we go, stun's gonna be on, Baby ghosting the chase, Blank flashes, and the fact that Faker was coming is enough to zone him out. Last of a flash, though. And this is really one of the things I don't like about Blank's decision-making. His mid lane has set up a bit of a freeze here. He actually just wants to zone off the rise, which means Faker can only move second. Bayme can always walk first to the Raptor because he's so far back in the lane, and Faker is also so far back towards his own tower, sitting with that frozen wave. So Blank should just not invade. Just let Faker win the mid lane. Don't do anything, but he decides to go in, lose the flash. And you're seeing how hard it is to win a two-on-two -two lane here. Melee support versus range. Wolf's kiting means so much damage comes into Jin Zhao. That's why almost every pro player will tell you, melee into range, you will lose that matchup every single time as far as supports are concerned. But they get a stun on a wolf. He does not get for the chompers, though. Crucially, those did not come down in time from Jin Zhao. That could have been a kill. This is also a little bit of a bad habit out of the LPL bottom lanes that they just continue to trade into minion waves. Uh, I think that, you know, this is getting incredibly dicey, actually, for IMA's bottom lane, even though they are getting Ooh, the fairly good spell folk. Shield. Yeah, a late spell shield's a big deal. Bang's gonna get stunned. The Chompers, I don't think we're up from cooldown yet, though, and he doesn't layer in the CC. Rode's gotta jump away, but still a very injured Braum. Chucks his last potion, and it's up to sustaining now. Well, let's see what happens. Midia Voidless coming in. No Flash Faker. He does have Cleanse, though. But there's the root, there's the damage. It's oh, an early Cleanse, and that means a Voidless chains him down. One more hit will do it. First Blood for the IMA. Jungler. Blank not gonna get enough done. A little bit of damage actually chasing in. He's gotta be careful though. And he's actually gonna get it, but it trades back. A great overload bounce from Bami off the minions to get it back. Two to one, Aime. Fantastic gank out of a Voidless there. Pretty much saves Bami's lane because he was getting shoved in. That was a big pressure point. However, Faker, he steps back forward and that leaves him open. Yeah, snared first and then he cleanses just when he thinks Kuhn hits him. But it was just a little bit too early. He got snared from it. A Voidless picks up the kill. And now Blank, remember, he had no flash because he went for that Raptor invade. He didn't have to go for. So even when he gets the kill, he's unable to flash away straight away. And he actually ends up dying. Bami picks up a kill. Very, very important for him. And again, because his spell flux had already bounced on the minions, even though Blink dodged the overload skill shot, it bounced off the caster minion, hit him anyway, and did enough damage to pick up the kill. Very, very tight timing and very fortunate the spell flux was up there. And you know, we see double mana item already coming out of the rise. You know, Bami in his solo queue is going a lot of Rod of Ages. I know it's not your favorite build in this situation, Deficio. No, I do prefer, well, actually, Blank is once again in the jungle, but I do prefer the TNT Morello Normicon. You get the same amount of mana, you get actually more AP, more cooldown reduction from Morella. Yes, you do skip out on the HP, which is the problem, but later on for Ryze, it's all about that shielding anyway for him, which is gonna give him a lot of effective stats. That's why you want MR and magic resist from like GA, and the shielding plus the reduction from MR and the magic resist, sorry, MR and the armor, is actually more effective than just flat HP for the Ryze. But uh, I do understand why they go Rod of Ages. They want that early HP instead. They don't want to risk getting blown up by something like a Cassiopeia and Italy combo. Right, looking for the combo right now. The damage is in. Nice poison. And 
couple of Twin Fangs in. Faker, you can see he's able to win these 1v1s, generally speaking, but because of that earlier gank, Baimi was able to tie the minion score back up, get that kill and assist, and he's winning his lane now. Yeah, it's when Cassio starts it up because it's very hard as a Rise to turn back into the Cassio to take a trade because then obviously the ultimate comes out, no cleanse being run by Baimi right now. So if the first poison does hit from Faker, there's nothing that Baimi can really do but run away. If he opens up on Faker, however, expect a lot of damage to come out. Yeah, it's going to be a trade of high damage mid laners and how much of this they can actually land. Blue buff respawns. Looks like Baby's going to get that one pretty cleanly. No one's around to contest even. Road is able to roam up to make sure that happened well. And it's interesting that Braum has completely left the lane coming up to the top side now. Well, one thing to always look for when you see this standard lane meta is when supports recall, they very often just walk up mid and then decide to go top or bot lane. They're going for Duke. Gets the flash here, but it's very important as a support, you don't just tunnel and run straight back to the bottom lane. Go towards the mid lane. If you have a ward, you can always set up vision for one of your laners. And if you then want to set up an aggressive play on the top side, your support can actually join because you didn't pass straight back to the bottom lane. So you see this a lot. Faker getting locked down again. The quick trade and road is just here to say hello. And this is something that I may actually like to do. We've already seen that they got out traded in a 2v2. So if road leaves and wolf matches, it kind of becomes a 1v1 situation where it's just a pushing battle. And you know, Jinx is completely fine in that situation right now. Only 10 CS down. So you understand why road wants to get out. He's also one of the big playmakers. But SKT was able to take jungle control. You saw a little bit ago that Wolf ran into this bottom jungle, put several wards down as he saw both the Voidless and Road reveal themselves. It set up that dive right now by Blink, and now suddenly Jin Zhao is in a bad spot, and it's going to be the root landing into all the Q skill shots, but it was also the Flame Charmers that landed. One more shot, I'll do it. That's going to be the stun on the Wolf. He's running out of HP, has to flash away. Here come the Teleport, Summoner heal in, and he's going to stay alive. The re-engage on the Road flashing to stay up just barely. An amazing J now on the wrong side of an Ice Pillar. Oh, he's missed. going to whip a great dodge by Blank, and Bang gives us up the kill. Now the slows, the chase into the turret, Repel isn't going to be enough. Blank with another kill thanks to the red buff, 3-2 SKT. And actually, fantastic, fantastic rotation out of Faker as well. That was a 5v3 for a lot of that because, you know, Priority wasn't gamed in the mid lane. He will lose out on some CS, but Turret picked up. That's a huge play out of SKT. Yeah, I made a thought to go pick up a few kills, but SKT reacting instantly with multiple members on the bottom lane, and that is so important for this SKT lineup. You get first tower, you get some more kills for yourself. He has a Cloud Drake as well. And wow. that Cloud Drake is actually super impactful in a game like this, because when you play against Ryze, he wants to play in side lanes. He wants to rotate a lot, move between the lanes. If you can match that and maybe be even quicker due to the Cloud Drake, it actually has a ton of value for you. So let's have another look at this. I mean, when this setup came in, this would be all because of Rhodes' early roam up into that top lane. And SKT did overextend quite far, but when the teleports come in, a little bit of interesting target selection out of an AZJ. Yeah, and just the I may honestly going too aggressive. They didn't have the jungle here, they didn't have the mid laner, and there was no vision in the river, so they didn't even know exactly where Faker was on the map. They knew he left the mid lane, didn't know how close he was to the bottom lane, so they end up going a little bit too aggressive. They actually did the same yesterday against Flash Wolves, where they went for some fights they didn't have to. Think back to a Voidless on the Zac without HP, jumping towards Flash Wolves and dying. So they're not really uh, too unfamiliar with falling behind. This a different team they're playing, though. Yeah, exactly right. You can see how big the punish is from SKT. They just take everything away from you. It's not just a turret. It's also, you know, big CS discrepancy now in the bottom and top lanes. Dragon and also disappears off the map. Jungle is huge, but I guess that's expected. You kind of challenge Nidalee to outpace you while you're ganking as an Elise. And I think that, you know, Avoidless definitely lost that so far in this game. Although he did get a good early gank onto Faker. Once again, looking for ganks on a Faker. Not quite going to find it, though, as the Elise slinks through, I believe, did get spotted by the caster minions, and we see more trades. Duke really dominant up in this top lane, 12 minions up already, plus the assist, and you can see he's able to shove Amazing J around. Quick grasp trigger once again, and we have Blank now coming in from behind. Looks for the Gromp, it's not there. And will he look for the dive? It doesn't seem that likely, just going for a bit of control over this side of the map. Yeah, take he, the scuttle. He doesn't have enough information on the remaining IMA members. They know where either Voidless or Road were on the map. Dive would have been too risky in this to Just get division and back away. This uh, top lane matchup, though, is going to be so important for SKT later. Because when you play against a team who wants to play 1 3 1, if you have a winning top lane matchup, it is so good to just shut down the 1 3 1 completely because you have full pressure in that lane. So this Trundle is such an MVP pick for them because it's just going to dominate the poppy all game long. And that means it's basically about Beimei winning the other side lane. But this guy. Well, he's not really getting ahead, and, and this rise is going to need a bit of time before it's going to be too impactful. 
I completely agree in that, and that's where it becomes a juggling act of, you know, can we rotate Bami into Duke's lane and try and blow him up? Because, you know, no resistance is yet picked up from the Rise. The ultimate's not going to give Trundle that same kind of tankiness. Um, but it all is about that timer. If Duke gets any further ahead, he's just going to completely ignore the Rise as well and just run away. You see, once again, trading back and forth. Duke does get a lot of damage down. Amazing J traded through his shield. Now Blink is part of the mix as well. So here comes the tough part. The Javelin's going to land. Aggro is still on to Duke. The tackle, the knock of Amazing J cannot get out in time. Another kill comes through for Blank. The sub is working. 100% kill participation on this Nidalee. Out farming, out killing. And Duke has always been a great one-on-one -on -one top player. And you can see that he's calling for assistance when he needs to. He's now 20 CSR. They've got great pressure on the top side of the map. However, Amazing J does need some help right now because the further ahead this trundle gets, the harder it is for IMA to execute on any kind of 5v5 fight. Ooh, the stun's gonna land though. The rune prison will be in range. Blank can't go away for quite a while, but here comes the pillar. Here comes Duke and not enough damage yet. Yeah, the skill shot's going to land. And crucially, a voidless also was able to jump out. A nice escape as well, Baby, getting him with the ulti. Out they go. The nice one for Zero to salvage some of this game. In the end here, Blank dies, and so does Road, one for one, but SKT can now take away a blue buff. Very, very important. Keep denying that from the Ryze, who's spamming away in that mid lane. SKT always able to get just a little bit more from these trades. Good start, avoid just getting the cocoon, and then it's just the scope flex into room prison for the two second snare. Gets the kill, and here's Road. Yeah, and it kind of looked like a little bit of a me mechanical error there as he uh, pounced to the left. Good rise ulti to get themselves out of danger, but one for one trade, blue buff going over. That's no big deal for SKT, and you can see 3k still in the lead. I mean, they're completely fine with the pace that this game is going at, because the further ahead that Trundle gets, he's now got three assists. His cull's about to be checked in, probably by about the fifth, uh, 18 minute mark. He's just sitting so pretty. Yeah, and you really know a team is winning the early game, big time, honestly, when all sides of the map is kind of in your favor. Because normally, if you go for the dive on top lane, the enemy team should be able to do something on the bottom lane. But in this situation, I may just push all the way down to the tier two tower. Like you see, the Jinx is sitting down here in the bottom lane again. So that means I may actually doesn't have a winning lane on the map right now. And that makes it very, very hard to play League of Legends if you have no strong lanes to play around. It's also one of the reasons that Siv is just so popular. I mean, she can wave clear so incredibly quickly, go mid, catch that wave as well. And there's not really all that much you can do against it, especially when you're fighting that skirmish. You can see now they're rotating three members into the mid lane and the siege really has begun and not enough wave clear. Yeah, it's such a problem when you pick some of these side lanes that can lose early on. If you don't have anyone who's really winning, or there may be the Ryze who will try and challenge in the mid lane. This basically happens when you go for place, you end up overextending, you don't have control of the river so the enemy team can roam and then you suddenly get collapsed on. And SKT, it's honestly slow and steady. They haven't done anything crazy just yet, but they're sitting with, with a 3k goal lead. Yeah, they really need Hurricane to come out of Jinx, because that's the mm -hmm. time that you can get Jinx into the mid lane. She can start wave clearing from pretty long range, you know, try and get the rise down bottom or up top and force this 1-3-1 one, one style. However, because of how far behind Jinjiao did fall, it's 20 CS down in only 15 minutes. He's a thousand gold full stop away from Hurricane right now. It's going to be several minutes until he has that item. And it means SKT probably finish not only Drake number two, but the next couple out of turf before Jinx has good wave gear tools. Yeah, and then we got to look at how does Aime transition the rise to the side lane in the first place? Because right now top lane is going to push for SKT all the time. Bot lane is going to push for SKT as well. So Bayme will have to walk in and pick up a lane from the tier 2 tower basically and push it very slowly out and that buys a lot of time for SKT to set up, you know, keep 4 men in the mid lane, Jinx shows up to wave clear, nah, you just flash on her straight away and then she's gone, she can't wave clear. So it's really, really hard for Aimee to actually set up this split push in the first place. They need one of these side lanes to be pushed out and then you can move the rise. And look how impressive this is. I mean, they take down the dragon, they have priority on the bottom side of the map, and all of a sudden, Duke pulls back. He understands when one side of the map is pushing, he's exposed to that gank, three members roam up top, and he just doesn't give anything away, plays nice and safely. That means he's going to be able to pick up all that farm, and it's just very experienced, calm play out of SKT. And it's something we like to look at a lot, I can understand it's not always the most exciting thing, but when you just look at the minimap a lot, you can see these small movements, you know? Four members on the bottom side, as you said, top man, he steps back. No chance for a dive or a gank or anything. He's very safe. And you just make sure you take something from the enemy without giving them anything in return. It's been happening repeatedly right now. SKT always been a very smart, very controlled team right here. And they've really given almost nothing up. A couple trades and kills, sure. A couple ganks maybe went back and forth. But perfect on turret, perfect on Drake so far. Nothing really given up here. I may have very little turret damage overall. You can see Jin Zhao 
solo farming under his tier two turret, just waiting to get enough gold to be relevant, which by the time he is, the game might just be out of reach anyway. And this is a worry about SKT. I mean, they're such a slow, methodical rolling beast, but when they do really get that momentum behind them, they don't make the mistakes that other teams worldwide have made in the past to really leave that door open. So I may right now might start looking for some desperation plays quite soon with that Rise ulti, because honestly, if this game keeps going this way, uh, the Civ is going to be huge, the Cassiopeia is going to be huge, and there's not really all that much they can do. Yeah, I guess we're looking at one of those plays where Amazing Day picks a fight against Duke and then the Rise TPs in, maybe even with the Voidless, and they try and kill Duke and take a tower for it. But SKT should always have wards in the river to spot when the Ryze is moving. Yes, it is a teleport, he has his ulti, but the range is not long enough to bypass multiple wards on the way to top lane. So they will see him leave, and then it's very easy to call. Ryze is moving, step back, be careful. Amazing, Jay has to be a bit careful, but realizes with Skillshots coming his way, knows there's three up there, but still a lot of members of both teams now on this top side of the map. Looks like Aimei was able to read the fact that SKT was putting members up here as Road and Jin Zhao trying to play wave clear. Sadly for Jin Zhao, just not quite enough for the Hurricane and makes wave clear slow. And the timing that they did it on, the wave was already at the tier two. Jin Zhao recognized that the recall came up. He had to go top lane to match the 2v2, otherwise the turret's gonna fall down. All of a sudden the wave pushed back towards Duke. This guy's gonna get such a huge CS lead right now, if you have a look at it on the map. And really, the way that this game is going, they're outmatched in the split push. They're outmatched in, I guess, even the four-man unit. There's very few room for errors right now for Aimei. One more and the game is just done. Yeah, effectively, if you are Aimei, you're trying to get to late game with the Jinx at this point, but SKT, they won't let you get to late game, Duke. He's angry. And he's, he's actually he's not angry good. enough. He just no. has a minion. <laughs> but just taking a bite out of Poppy all the same every single time. Saving his ulti for it. Wants to make sure he retains that cooldown. Now innovated on the bottom side of the map because Duke has priority here. Blank steals away yet another buff. The blue was stolen not long ago. This is the red being gone as well. SKT might even still control top jungle. You can see Avoidless wasn't able to complete the red buff taking. Actually, Baker cleanses out, dodges the ulti, just immune to all CC. As now SKT is continuing to chase oh. the flash. He actually gets the stun on a baby. And this Ryze forced to flash himself out as well, ghosting to get himself away. Then a wolf means no more CC, and I may run away with their lives. And that's all set up through the vision control. SKT right now have complete control of the river as soon as Avoidless goes for that invade. I mean, the Nidalee just needs to beeline towards him. Faker cuts off the exit. Some good mechanical play flashing over that wall. But really, I may had no business being there in the first place because they just didn't wrestle back control of that river. They might wrestle control of Amazing Jay. Barely missing the javelin, but even still with the Trundle ulti on, he's got a flash out. Amazing Jay losing another summoner spell. And SKT with control over that mid lane. This will be a turret falling with no contest here. No Rift Hero picked up this game, but turret number two, they actually can't quite stick to it. They're saving it for later. Yeah. No, they can get it. Pick up the gold. Three HP. members from IMA just lost, or two members, sorry, from IMA lost flashes here. So if another fight like that breaks out, well, then SKT picks up two kills instead. For now, they might just have to take this tower, one hit on it, unless it's the bait where IMA strike. Wait for that Rise ulti from the Raptor camp in behind SKT when they want to go last at that tower. Probably not going to happen, but uh, if you're Aimei, you, you got to look for that opportunity soon. And you know, Aimei is no stranger to this. They're a team that has historically fallen so far behind. Just go watch their gauntlet run. You know, they're 10,000 gold. All their inhibitors down. Amazing J does get that flank and they pull it out. Sure, that's against Team WE in the LPL. Uh, not against SKT, who are a whole different beast. But if a team is comfortable being behind, if that is such a thing, if it is a thing, I mean, it's a fascinating thing about some of the LPL teams. You know, you have WE, where it seemed like one of the strategies were to fall behind, let the enemy team start Baron, and then Condi, the jungler, would steal the Baron, and they're like, that was the way to win the games. And IMA was like, yeah, let's fall behind. Let's place a deep ward on the map, and then let them push us in, and then we TP there with the amazing game. We win the team fight. Obviously, it's not the main strategy for the teams, but it has happened quite a lot. And it's some of the crazy things we get to see in the LPL from time to time. And I guess one of the things about IMA is that they are one of the more patient LPL teams. I mean, a team like LGD... Whoa! Ooh, weird flash from Blank. Maybe he didn't want to hit that, but he did. Teams like Thunder LGD, down. teams he like... Was distracting. Look at me! Yeah, I'm flashing! Yeah, yeah. Oh, we took your tower. Teams like EDG will play a much quicker tempo in losses. You know, they like to speed up the game, look for those team fights. IMA, WE are some of those teams that like to protract the game, pull it back out. Uh, so they're still playing a very scaling composition, and hopefully sure. they can look for those opportunities. There are things to keep in mind. That late game Jinx is always going to be incredibly scary, and though typically Sivir can match her on that damage output, Braum is 
my favorite pick into the saber. You can break the ricochet, break the boomerang blades, and neuter 70% uh, of Sivir's damage with the unbreakable shield up. And so maybe Jin Zhao carries a fight later on in this game, but right now SKT have all the tools, all the control. Two drags, up two dragons, uh, sorry, up two turrets as well, and a third one spawning that they're taking. It's also about the relative distance that you can safely output that damage. I mean, Jinx is much longer range than Sivir. Maybe the first mistake that we've seen out of SKT in a long time. Wolf actually had no business contesting that vision right there, had to burn a summoner spell. Is something very, very minor, but you know, has historically been an issue for the support player of SKT. Sure. Now Rode trying to do his best Wolf cosplay, doing the same thing, walking into a jungle that he had no business being in. At least he was able to walk through without burning his ignite or anything, so he's fine. But SKT back on the rotation game, up to the top lane, double cloud trick, tons of movement speed, and now that's going to be top lane tier one going down. 3 0 in turrets, 3 0 in drakes. SKT taking their time, but continuing to build advantage without really any opportunity to be caught out. Yeah, and this is what we talked about earlier how SKT had full control of the side lanes. They're pushing side lanes, you know, both top and bot lane, they're control in mid lane. So I may has never found a way to move the Rise to that side. Because whenever he went there, the, the wave would be pushed all the way back to his tower, so he could never really be a split pusher. He's down there now, the Rise in the bottom lane, and he's trying to find the Duke lane to see if he can actually harass that melee champion. Meets the rest of SKT, they're looking for a fight. And he's aced it up by the Karma Shield. Doesn't quite land the Q poison, but still plenty of damage to avoid Liz, who's forced to run away. Bang burns the ulti as well. Poison under the turret, losing health is Aimee. And a couple of shots in for Bang, not too much else gained. Couple ults down. The problem with this play, sending Rise into the bottom lane at this stage of the game, is it's too late now. It's 25 yeah. minutes, they have no control over the river, and with Cassiopeia, Baron is such a real threat, and Rise doesn't have teleport. I mean, he has the ultimate, but it's not going to cover that same distance. So, in this 1 4 split push game, SKT just naturally went out because of how much control they have over that top side objective. They've had very good, just a very good job, yeah, playing around all of this. The champion matchups seem nice. They're clearing faster, absolutely. Another attempt to steal the red buff away. Jin Jiao says, hey, I really, really want that. And it's up to Road to Black. No, that was close. The Voidless actually smites to make sure it didn't get stolen. I would have liked to get that on Jin Jiao, but will not be able to. And we do have some time, you know, to talk about different things in this game because SKT is just slowly choking out IMA and making sure they can't get anything. Fake also blocking the choke point here, funny enough and getting all the minions into tower. Let them all die. No one gets to pick them up. That's a blue buff as well. Beime, if you wonder what he's skilling, you know, he actually took ulti before. Yep. Level 10, some Rise players don't do that. Take a 10 at 11 because the first mm -hmm. one is fairly low range. He took it very early on. He's also maxing Q, the overload, which actually is not the most effective thing you can do. It's better to get a few ranks in, into it, like rank three, rank four, and then just go full up in your E, your spell flux, because it increases the overload damage when you use spell flux first by 15% every time. That is more than the base damage on the rise goes up the overload when you rank that one. So it's actually better later on to just max out spell flux and then put the last two ranks in overload in case you want to play rise. There was a great guide about this, you know, on the TSM subreddit actually that I read that was fantastically well written. I'm sorry, I don't remember who actually wrote it, but he explains all these things into details. So right now, Beime, it's not been his greatest game of all time, despite being 2-0, because he actually expected to have much more of an impact mm. on this rise. They, they subbed him in to play this pick, and it hasn't really done anything. I mean, he's able to get things done in the early game, but this game is just completely stalled out by the fact that SKT have just controlled the map absolutely. You've got a 60 minion lead in the jungle. Blank playing one of his very rare Nidalee games. I believe he said he played it, what, once? Oh. Once in the summer split. Yeah, once in the summer split. And so the last... Yeah, right. So there you go. Maybe his first Nidalee win of the of the last six months or so, and actually doing, I think, fairly well on the champion. Baimi, uh, kind of 1v5 right now, as far as the scoreboard's considered. This has always been the scary thing about SKT. I mean, we saw Faker absolutely dominate a game already at Worlds, but he doesn't have to do that every game when this team is playing well. I mean, also a huge CS advantage in the bottom lane. Duke definitely won out in that 1v1 top lane. Multiple members of this team can and will carry. And then, you know, Faker can just fall back in line and do his role on this team. He's fallen down in CS, but, you know, still a three-item Cassiopeia doesn't really care. No, and it's been an easy game for Blank, as we talked about. His mechanics are not the problem. It's sometimes it's the decision-making when he's under pressure, especially. When you have multiple winning lanes, it is very easy to jungle, because almost everywhere you go, you can get backup. Someone can move with you and actually help you. There was once he didn't have backup, that's when he had to flash away, and that happened basically, what, 20 minutes ago? Ever since that, it's been 
a flawless performance from SKT where no one is really under pressure. And then I'm sure someone is going to argue 26 minutes in, why haven't they finished the game yet? Well, they're just playing very, very slow and steady. Now's the time to start setting up Baron. You are healthy enough to actually tank the Baron and take it down. You have the damage. And now you can force Aime into a team fight around this Baron here and win that fight. Exactly. The big thing when you're watching a team with a lead play is not the really broad strokes, but is the gold lead constantly going up? Are they taking vision control every minute or so? And this is now the culmination of that effort. They've got complete darkness here in this side of the map, taking down Baron pretty rapidly. And I may have to face check through several layers of wards, and there's not even a chance. Baron already picked up here by SKT, and maybe they find a bit of an engagement. Amazing Jay Flash again getting caught out by Faker, though. Puts him not quite into the wall, nothing really being gained. And Amazing Jay about to lose his life and does so. Sends members of SKT back, but no one else from Aimei was ready to follow in off Amazing Jay's Flash, just went in to die by himself. And notice the small things in the team fight. I mean, Juke completely zones out. Baimi, the only person that has any items, and right now he can't duel Juke. That's a very easy Baron pickup now for SKT, and they're just going to try and march it up mid lane. There we go, mid lane tier two going to be pretty easy, I believe. Bang pulling aggro, doesn't even care all that much. This will be another turret fell. 52 to 42,000 gold, a 10k gold lead, 27 minutes in. Absolutely massive right now by SKT as they continue to push in for the inhibitor turret. Amazing Jay still dead for 10 seconds. Be another tower here for SKT going down, at least getting it very low. There's still a few cast of minions and. Bang finally decides to step in, get the job done. And now that's how you pick up that Baron. No risk, no chance of Aimei actually stealing it. If Aimei had been there earlier, SKT would have turned around and picked the fight. Mm -hmm. So honestly, they were just waiting to be healthy enough, have enough damage, take the objective down, and now let's open up the base already. This is a desperation team fight. I mean, they've already used two big ultimates. Amazing Jay gets nailed here. They don't have the rise, and he misses the wall slam, which means that Amazing Jay is just going to get popped. Uh, I mean, they had to try something at that stage. I mean, giving away a Baron and not getting anything in response was always going to be bad news for this team. But now they're 11,000 gold down, and the game's just getting further and further out of reach. Yeah, you talked about it being a desperation team fight. I think Jin Zhao did literally zero damage during that encounter. The one auto he did get off was nullified by the Poppy ultimate regardless. So uh, absolutely nothing done right there. Zoned by just Karma and Wolf, the three members over there. And you know, while we're talking about snowballs, I always think it's uh, important to identify what a team does. If you're really long range, if you're a poke comp and you can siege up and take the game relatively quickly, sure, that's great. But when you have a look at SKT, they have all their carries underneath 500 range, right? So being able to siege into what is a rise, you know, is a jinx right now, would have been dangerous without the Baron buff. But at the same time, they have the Cassiopeia. So they set up vision control around that river and they're able to take it down pretty much on time. So. I I, I do agree that, you know, sometimes teams do uh, close out slowly, but you have to always look like, you know, what are they actually trying to accomplish on the map? Right now, they've been accomplishing a 12,000 gold lead 30 minutes in. I'm just enjoying playing against SKT. I yeah. want the game to last longer. <laughs> it's the experience. We just had C9 versus Flash. Let's go watch over 60 minutes. 71, roughly. And now I may. They want to do the same. They are not going to match that record. I don't SKT. think SKT will allow it. SKT too vicious of a team. Jinjiao half HP. Blank threatening the dive. Doesn't go for it. Jinjiao will stay alive. But top lane inhibitor turret now down as well. From Duke split pushing the one four split push working very well. Road tanks the javelin. Big shield on for SKT. More damage to the turret. A quick knockback. Puts a blank away, but it's still the siege that's not really being stopped. Smite to kill off the cannon minion. Yes, they'll drop it down, but a new wave of reinforcements is coming. Baby trying to fight Duke level 18, level 16 to 17, and just can't do quite enough damage to him walking back in. But the bottom lane siege still going through, and this turret now down to one third HP. And Duke just doesn't care at this stage of the game. I mean, he's already picked up three items he's got the boots in there as well so the cc not really affecting him and trundle at this stage you know when he does get ahead he's just such a menace in the split push because of the passive because of the ravenous hydra he just heals up off the wave and comes in to repeat it all again honestly this game is just so hard to be able to stop skt's game plan and even when a stun lands on bang right in his face in front of a turret there's just no follow-up there for ima they're not even defending the turret at the same time only three people were even in range of that fight oh by the way duke is top lane and killing an inhibitor and no one's around to even stop him now it's the Rizal, the Realm Warp, try to cut him off, but a nice pillar buys some time, and oh, there's no mid lane turret, by the way. He can just walk right past that inhibitor with no surprises here. Road, gonna lose the one going against him. Jin Jao have to have thanks to a grip from Bang, and here comes the Glacial Fissure, put damage on a Blank, can't quite kill him, the Rocket, not doing enough. Blank lives by the skin of his teeth, and now it's Baby dropped out. Faker with the Petrifying Gaze, the second kill comes in, thanks to Bang, avoid this running out of HP, down to the bottom.
bottom of your screen. One more shot. The crit's going to do it. Bang gets another. Amazing Jay's going to drop two and two right here. It's only Road left alive, and he's going to be lonely as it's him walking back to his home camp. Because guess what? SKT with the inhibitors all down now looking for the game winning push onto the Nexus turret. Then it was controlled the whole way through. SKT won their lanes. They won the fights. They played the control. And now 2 0 is the reward as SK Telecom T1 are in form, knocking down Ime. You know, ultimately, too smart, too good, and way too.